The camera interface has also changed compared to the previous versions of Sense. You see how it looks now. Main difference is there are a number of options for adding color effects. And when we say many, we really mean it. We've never seen so many color effects uh, on a phone software before. And the other thing is the image adjustments you can apply before taking the shot. Sharpness, saturation, contrast, exposure. Again, not a thing we see on uh, every handset, even the high-end ones. But on the other hand, there are no shooting modes. There's face detection, but there's no macro or night shot or let's say panorama or anything um, that we're used to seeing on the high-end handsets recently in video mode. There are again color effects you can apply before shooting the video. And of course it uh, does video in HD resolution, the 5 megapixel camera with LED flash. Both the video and the pictures are with enough detail, although it's a little bit smeared by the noise reduction algorithm used in the software. The color representation is good. Um, the camera shutter button is quite stiff, so if you're not holding the phone tight, the pictures might come out a bit blurry, unfocused. But uh, if you know this uh, quirk of the phone, then everything should be all right. The other cool application, new one, is the connected media. If you have a DLNA enabled TV, the phone supports it, so you can stream music, watch photos, slideshows, or stream videos directly to TV. It's gonna be searching now if it has something that supports DLNA in the vicinity. There's not, so it chooses to around the phone's video player. That's how video playing looks like. Pretty basic player. Not even a uh, video info option. Let's have a look at some other applications in the main menu. There's no dedicated file browser, but we're not really complaining about it. We downloaded Astro, which is uh, the most popular one. There's link to Amazon MP3 stores, Adobe Reader, Blocked Colors, you can block a bunch of your contacts. It goes straight to voicemail, calendar. It's the nice, simple HC Sense calendar. Now here's a cool service, transfer data. Via Bluetooth, you can transfer your contacts, text messages, etc. From your old phone to a new phone, let's say we choose um, an LG phone, not all the handsets of the manufacturer supported, but as you can see, a bunch of them are. And uh, it's a really cool service, so we hope uh, HTC will expand it in the future. This service is also present in the initial setup language. Some tutorials for the on-screen keyboard. And this transfer data from your old phone is present from the very beginning when you set up the phone. You can fire it up later as well. Connection, syncing, setting up your internet access, Google location. And here you can log into htcsense.com where you can uh, control your handset remotely, wipe it, totally erase all the data on it and uh, micro SD card as well. You can lock it remotely, you can see where it is on the map, etc. Really cool service. Set up your social networking accounts from here and you're good to go. Pretty good integrated experience of an initial setup. Soundhound for recognizing the song currently played around you. Wi-Fi hotspot for your supports, uh, wireless tethering, so the phone has a dedicated application. That's the gallery, photos, smooth multi-touch, if you turn it into landscape mode, 
we can browse a strip of thumbnails. Extremely smooth, thanks to the fast chipset. There's one touch sharing, numerous online services, popular ones. The same with the videos. Oh, no, simple, very functional gallery. One touch sharing, one touch media streaming, etc. The music player looks cool as usual. Sports album art, discover flow like scrolling. What we found very useful is the find videos option. You go to YouTube, there are no videos for this song currently. Well, let's try this one. Samantha James. And you can straight away fire up a video of the song from YouTube as opposed to only listening to it. The browser on the HTC Desire Z is extremely smooth. It's the stock Android 2.2 Froyo browser supporting Adobe Flash 10.1 skinned with the usual HTC minimalistic way. Extremely fast scrolling, absolutely no lack, although there are some flash elements on the page. Multi-touch works smooth as butter. Double tap as well. See, one of the best experiences we've had on an Android handset so far. And we want to demonstrate how flash works. Let's go to the Unreal Tournament website, which is entirely Flash-based. It loads. Together with the promo video, the trial. As you can see, the video works inside the browser. Great stuff. Great achievement by Google to include full flash support in Froyo. Of course, there are some entirely flash based sites that uh, will not work. For example, HBO.com. But uh, it doesn't work on any phone we've tried. I guess uh, it recognizes you're entering from a mobile device, regardless if it supports Flash or not. It just says it's now a Flash site. Enter from your desktop browser, etc. I'll view the mobile version. But the default browser is very good. Cool options, Windows. You can flip between pages, previews, a lot of options hidden just one level deep in the menu. Share the page right away via multiple channels possible. Oh no, one of the best browsers as we said, we've tested on an Android handset. Now we want to run a Quadrant standard benchmark test, the full benchmark. This phone has the second generation Snapdragon produced with the 45 nanometers. Um, process, which means it's much faster than the first generation at 1 GHz, as we already mentioned. It's extremely fast. You'll see the Quadrant scores in a little bit, and that's the stock handset. No overclocking or anything, although the T-Mobile G2 already has been overclocked to 1.3 GHz and more, achieving some amazing uh, Quadrant benchmark results. And this is going to stay probably the fastest stock handset, uh, this, this chipset, at least until the Galaxy S uh, receives its uh, Android 2.2 Froyo update. You see, 1572, and that's for a stock handset. But uh, synthetic benchmarks are nothing if 
of the real life performance is not good so let's try a 3d game that's uh, I think a simple basketball shooter let's put the textures on normal and check if there's any difference see how the ball looks like the details on it the game is smooth and let's change now to high texture quality you see the warning here high quality texture may seriously impact performance if it doesn't work revert to the previous settings so let's see how the HTC Desire Z fares on something that would uh, put a lot of handsets into trouble you see the texture on the ball much more detailed the crowd also you can now almost count the individual heads for some reason I fare much worse in scoring with okay so it definitely makes a difference in this chipset the new snapdragon chipset makes the phone extremely fast and it's uh, probably the fastest stock handset currently on the market in the end we have to say that if you're looking for an android handset with a physical keyboard that's probably the best one you can get the only thing uh, else we can think of is the samsung epic 4g and the t-mobile g2 which are only sold in the states it has a very good keyboard physical keyboard uh, which opens and closes with an innovative Z hinge mechanism which is sure to turn some heads and not only that in terms of design it's a looker brushed aluminum soft touch coating uh, feels very solid in the hand and it has inside the second generation snapdragon processor although it runs at 800 megahertz it just smokes for the benchmarks probably the fastest stock handset uh, currently on the market in terms of benchmarks it's much faster than the previous generation snapdragon at 1 gigahertz and it runs um, the new sense user interface extremely smoothly very uh, quickly absolutely no lack and it can be overclocked without recommended but uh, we've seen up to 1.3 gigahertz etc which is a tribute to um, the capabilities of this chipset when you add the new sense user interface with its cloud-based services for remote um, management of the phone online some offline navigational capabilities and numerous personalization options then this phone is definitely a, a winner if you're looking for an android handset with a physical keyboard this was a video review of the HTC Desire Z from Phoner